Hello, VC. Andreas here. Um, and it's time for yet another Wax Diabolique. This is uh, number 20. Um, <clears throat> I was a little um, nondescript last time I showed some records. Um, or actually, when I did the swapery reveal this week, as far as why I've been busy. Um, so, I'll talk a little bit about that now. Um, basically, last Friday, um, I got to play some music with some people, so, for the first time in a long time, and that was really fun, so I hope to be making that a regular thing, um, and maybe something will come of it, so, yeah. Um, so I've just been, like, diving back into, um, that fella there. That, that fellow there. Um, another reason I was busy is because I met up with a vinyl community member. Um, some of you may know him, some of you may not. Um, Gus, um, and also known as Invader of Your Heart, uh, was up in Portland checking out uh, PSU, Portland State University. For a, He got a scholarship there. So he was checking it out, see if he wanted to go. And we hit a couple record stores together. Um, <laughs> meeting Gus was uh, was good. Um, he comes off as you know he has like a lot of punk attitude, and, um, and he knows a lot of, about music for such a young age too. And uh, but in person, he's a pretty mellow dude. And I, I really did like hanging out with him for you know an hour or so. Um, but he bought me a few records, so I thought I'd show those first. Uh, everybody knows, if you watch him, he's a big fan of Perry Como. This is a double record set he picked up in the bargain bins for me. I, I like this type of music. It reminds me of... It's, it's a nostalgic thing. Uh, this one wasn't so good. Uh, he got me Rick Derringer. I guess the reason he's so into Todd Rundgren is because his uncle was somehow involved in uh, Todd Rundgren's career. So, uh, this was produced by Todd Rundgren. He recommended it. Wasn't really into it. You know, I don't know. It's, it's good filler, I guess. But yeah, it's not my bag. Uh, and then finally, he uh, recommended uh, this. Uh, Mink DeVille, and I think, uh, actually, Jonas, Jonas just picked this up, the same album, uh, Cabretta. Uh, this is really cool, actually, it's like early 80s, like, garage, rockabilly-esque stuff, um, but, you know, you can tell it's from the 80s, um, uh, well, actually, this is 77, sorry, um, but yeah, it's pretty good stuff, I liked it, really poppy, alright, um, see what we got here. Uh, what you're listening to right now is one of my recent pickups. Um, this is Holy Sons with Survivalist Tales. And I grabbed this for the cover. I love that cover. And it looks even better in a Blake. Um, but it turns out that Holy Sons is a side project of uh, Emil Amos, which is, uh, and a couple others, uh, who, who is also in Grails, which a couple of you guys have been turned on to, uh, but this is really cool, like, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, it's almost like goth country, in a way, uh, with some psych influences. Um, yeah, I'm no good at genres, but yeah, really cool, came with a free digital download, which somehow I fucked up, so I'm gonna have to write the record label, but yeah, so we'll be listening to that. Um, picked up a full length from Ganglions, and, um, if you guys remember my 7-inch thing in November, uh, one of the 7-inches I got was from Ganglions. And uh, I found this album in um, the used section. It's in a Blake. 
Look at how beautiful it looks. This is their first album. Uh, they're from Sacramento, California, and they are a like a psych noise rock band. So um, if you're into that kind of stuff, some synth things like that, and plus the you know, the artwork's killer. I love this kind of stuff. So yeah, check them out. Really uh, kind of lo-fi too. Um, this is something Anthony uh, Infinite Groove recommended me a while back, and I found an album finally. Um, I don't know, sometimes I look for the stuff you guys tell me to look for, and sometimes, you know, it just pops into my head. Which most of the time, that's what happens, you know. Um, most of the time, I, I'm looking for what I'm looking for, and then sometimes I'll be crate digging, and I'll just find it. And this is Indian Jewelry. Total. He had sent me a video of them a while back. And this, these guys are from Houston, I think. And um, they're also like, they've been around actually a while. Uh, this album is from 2010. Yeah, uh, We Are Free label. Um, and uh, yeah, this is really good. It's um, electronic, psychedelic, um, pretty out there stuff. Um, a lot of samples and things like that. I mean, not too out there, but uh, really cool nonetheless. Yeah. Indian jewelry. Uh, picked this up in the used section. Um, listened to this yesterday, and it's really super good. Um, I know a lot of you guys are into Omar Rodriguez Lopez, and um, I love Mars Volta. Um, I don't have any of the records. Um, I do have uh, Goliath on CD, um, but. Yeah, I'd like to start getting some Mars Volta records. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard by now that At The Drive-In is back together um, for at least a couple shows, which doesn't really make much sense to me um, because I think Mars Volta is a better band. But um, this record is really good. This is the one that I think he did with his wife, uh, Solar Gambling. And it's in a Blake, and you can see it. Uh, wow, the artwork just pops. And this is on uh, Clear Blue Vinyl. Um, this record, uh, I dabbled in the jazz section, <laughs> and I was reading the description on the back of this record, and it piqued my interest, so I grabbed it, and this is, is something that probably, um, the more out there jazz fans would have, um, because, I mean, just the concept of this record, um, but yeah, uh, John Appleton and Don Cherry, Human Music on Flying Dutchman records. And basically, that's John Appleton, Don Cherry. Um, yeah, this record is, I, you know, and this this is where another reason I'm not like a big jazz fan is because like records like this show up in the jazz section. This to me is a noise record, you know, um, in the right way, like Derek says, um, noise in the right way. Because basically, what is happening here? is John Appleton is a electronic musician and Don Cherry is a jazz musician. Um, wood, bamboo, metal flutes, uh, kalimbas, earthquake drums, cornet, and traditional mouthpiece and bassoon reed. That's what he's playing on here. And what has happened is um, John Appleton has hooked it up through a synthesizer and it's interpreting the each of the four songs through synthesizer. So. Um, yeah, it comes out as more of a noise record, and there are some semblances of rhythms and things like that, but, I mean, I, you know, the fact that I have to go to the jazz section to pick something like this up, it don't make no sense, man. It should be an experimental, if you ask me. I don't know. I'm opinionated. What you gonna do? And then finally, I told you there wouldn't be an update without these guys. Uh, picked up Sonic Youth's first record. Uh, this is not an original obviously. Um, this is the reissue from a few years back, and it's actually a double record. I'll get it out of the Blake here. Oh, have, has anybody had uh, any Blake uh, casualties yet? I have. I was trying to Blake. I think a thicker record, and I, I split a Blake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's the middle. Yeah. 
and it's their first EP, um, along with uh, early live stuff from '81. Um, and I've read about all these songs now in the book Goodbye Twentieth Century. I'm just now getting to the point where they're recording um, uh, Evil, and yeah, Steve Shelley's just joined the band. But this is when, um, gosh, what's the dude's name? Uh, Richard Edson is still drumming for him, their first drummer. Um, and truth be told, it really sounds like um, like kraut rock. Uh, there's a lot of repetition because I hadn't heard early Sonic Youth up until this point, like their first stuff. And there's a lot of repetition and kind of it get, it gets you lost in there. A uh, little bit of a vortex if you really deep listen to this. Um, so yeah, definitely an awesome pickup. And then I found this in the used section uh, when I was out with Gus. Um, pretty stoked on this. Um, this is Sonic Youth's Master Dick, 12-inch <laughs> uh, single. It's uh, import from England, from Great Britain, and it actually says, uh, "Pay no more than two pounds fifteen for this," which I did. <laughs> Um, and this is on, I just actually just got done reading about the label they got signed to in England, um, uh, uh, Blast First. And, um, also a cool thing about this is there's some, uh, dead wax action. Um, let's see, on side one it says, Chicone Death Rock Dream Tinkle. And on side two it says, Humpy Pumpy Psycho-acoustic frenzy. Acoustic with a K. <laughs> so, uh, I thought that was really rad. Um, so basically what they do here is... Um, it's all live stuff. A lot of noise. Um, and Thurston just going off and being a jerk. <laughs> uh, yeah, Thurston Moore is hilarious to me. I just, I think he's, uh, he's one of the clown princes of rock and roll. Um, and there's a, here's the inner sleeve. Nice picture there. Um, obviously Steve Shelley's in the band at this time. Um, and then the most hilarious thing is this article here. This was in Maximum Rock and Roll in November of 87. And it's basically uh, Ben Weasel of uh, Screeching Weasel, if you guys you know remember punk and maximum rock and roll and stuff from the late 80s, early 90s, into the mid 90s. Screeching Weasel was a big pop punk band. And basically he just rips Sonic Youth and Husker Du and Green River and the replacements and R.E.M. like a new asshole here. Um, so th this, this self-deprecation I thought was great. Um, reminded me, I think that, what was the band, Uriah Heep, who used, um, like, all the bad press that they had gotten as one of their album covers. Sonic Youth paying homage on this single, so. That is it, folks. Wax Diabolique, number 20. And, um, great meeting you, Gus. Great hanging out with you. Um, been watching a lot of the videos lately, and, um, getting ready to watch the, uh, the monster video from Ted, Teddy and uh, Jeff. And um, yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, I might do a little record shopping this weekend, but um, I've got a date tonight, so. <laughs> I love you guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully soon I can do a 300 subscriber contest, but um, I was at my page the other day and I've actually lost like nine subscribers in the past week so I don't know why that is maybe the spiders are crawling away anyway I love you guys um, keep on watching and uh, thank you so much for doing so and I'll keep watching yours take care